In the name of Almighty God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to our service on this, the second Sunday before Advent. And next Sunday will be Christ the King, but it's good to be with you this Sunday wherever you are joining me from. And I hope you're keeping well. And let us start with our first hymn. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil distortions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for all God's children. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness, we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his God's grace and nourish you with God's blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We sing the Gloria.
So let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, and when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come up upon them, as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not the night of the awe of the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. For those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore encourage one another, and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples the kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two made two more talents, but the one who received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled the accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed me over two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been made trustworthy in a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? 
then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received at least what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For though all those who have been have more will be given, and they will be have an abundance, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let's speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was a teenager, our Saturday evenings were usually spent with my father in the study. He was a high-level manager of a, of a butchery firm, a chain of butcher shops, and uh, he would be taking in the sales figures from all over the area on a Saturday night ready for a Monday morning. Um, there would be odd occasions where someone else would do it because we had something on, but that was our Saturday nights. Um, and uh, you could judge by the mood he came out of the study uh, whether it had been a good week or not. And being that the trade was butchery, um, it's a complicated business. It's not like running a grocer's shop where a case of beans comes in, that's what it costs, that's what you will sell it for. A box of cornflakes comes in, that's what you pay, that's what it costs, and that's what you sell it for. It's easy to work out what that shop should turn over on that day. But that doesn't happen with butchery. You have a side of beef come in, and some of that will be cheap cuts, some of it will be a bit of chuck steak or a bit of shin, perhaps even some brisket. Some of it will be fillet steak, rump steak, sirloin, a nice bit of silver side, which makes more money. So, and of course, quite a lot of it is bone, which is waste. So it's very difficult to work out what that side of beef, when it comes in, or that whole lamb or that side of pork, is actually worth. So the, there was two figures that uh, were very important to my dad as, as the as senior manager. That was the gross profit of the shop and the turnover. You run a grocery shop and you think, well, we usually make 20%. You know if the shop has turned over 20,000, 20% of that is going to be gross profit. But it doesn't work quite like that with butchery. And so managers were being chased for gross profit. It would be easy perhaps for them to get sales up, but the gross profit might not be there because they are making judgment calls. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, these managers, in some ways were almost, these managers of these shops were almost running their own business, looking after talents, a bit like the story we have now. My father would trust these butchery shop managers with some stock for them to turn it into as much money as possible, making sure the gross profit was right, but also making sure turnover was there. No point in having high gross profit if there's no turnover, or high turnover if there's no gross profit. And I'm sure sometimes when my dad would walk into these shops, they either think, oh, no, or, oh he's going to be pleased. And so my dad was trusting these butchery managers very much like the man in the gospel today was trusting the slaves. It was important that my dad had the confidence of these managers just as the slaves, the labourers had to have the confidence of the landowner. So in this parable the servants and God is the master. We are the servants, God is the master. God is so far above us in every respect that we can only consider being his servants. We are utterly dependent on God. We owe everything we have and everything we are to God. 
And it is only right that we should be God's servants and carry out God's will in all things. In a real sense, we should consider ourselves privileged to even call ourselves God's slaves. God does not treat us as servants or slaves. He gives us an autonomy and a responsibility and has many treasures. And instead of regarding us far beneath him, God treats us as co-workers and raises us up in status to be almost equal with God. God places enormous trust in us and enables us to act in a world with a huge amount of freedom. By trusting those servants with their talents, the master raised them up in status from ordinary workers to be masters in their own right. Some of them understood what was being asked of them. They understood that the gifts they had been given were not to be wasted, but were to be put to work and to be used to bear fruit. They understood that they could not now sit back and do nothing, for they had a new role in the world. They immediately put the talents to work and reaped a harvest accordingly. The servant who did nothing, who buried his treasure in the ground, was unable to accept that responsibility given to him. He hid it and ran away clearly. The amount he had been given, the amount he'd been given put him under stress and he did not know how to deal with it. He was a bit like I suppose, a butchery manager who, who just didn't really know what to do. In the last few weeks of a liturgical year, we were invited to think about the end of the world and the last judgment. And this parable of the, ta parable of the talents points directly to Judgment Day, when we have to give an account of our stewardship. If we want to be found worthy to live with God forever in heaven, then we have in this life, to show him that we think as he thinks, that we can use whatever we have been given to do the things that he would do with them. We cannot treat our personal talents and the good things that come to us in this life as if they were there just to make things easy for ourselves. No, all these things are given to us to build up God's kingdom here on earth. They are given to us to use for the benefit of others especially those less fortunate than ourselves. Preachers of old used to speak about the last day as a dreadful day, a day of fear, a day of trembling. They thought that fear was a good way to motivate people. I'm sure you've all heard about doom and brimstone sermons. But it's not a good way to encourage people to live within the cardin commandments. Jesus didn't use fear. And a good example of this method he used is this parable, which teaches us that God wants to raise us up to be co-workers in the building of the kingdom. And this is a better way of getting people to live a righteous life. It is, because, it is better because it corresponds to reality. It is better because this is actually the invitation that God extends to each one of us. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Lord God, it is so easy to be faithful in big things, perhaps those which attract attention, but often so difficult to be faithful in little things that only you and I know about. Today as a community of faith, we come before you as we are bringing with us other people as they are. We pray for us all, knowing that you love us more than we can imagine. We pray for all religious leaders. May they be faithful in proclaiming your goodness to our world, which is so desperate for love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for everyone who lives and works in places of high publicity. May they be faithful in little things of life which do nothing for their ratings, but which quietly do to spread much love and peace. 
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who care for others. May they be faithful in tenderness, compassion and understanding. And may God bless them in their efforts to support people who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peacemakers, especially those working in situations of war and bloodshed. May they be faithful to their calling to practice justice, integrity and wisdom as they try to end conflict and heal divisions. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for everyone affected by recent extreme weather and natural disasters. May they be faithful in their efforts to provide hope for all those who are at risk. May those whose homes and businesses have been damaged find the courage to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the innocent civilians who are trapped and threatened by war. May they be faithful to their hurting family members and the people around them. May there be a quick and just end to hostilities. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are ill or have asked for our prayers, including Margaret, Baby Lee, Helena, Pauline, Bill, Anne, Mike, Sylvia, Karen, Lynn, Maggie, Vernon, Velma, Jenny, Pat, David, Martinette, Tony and Marco. We pray that they may find strength in body, mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all those whom that we love, that you have taken to yourself, especially for Bert, Tracy and Carol. We ask you to comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for families, communities and businesses as they begin to prepare for Christmas. May they be faithful to the mood, true meaning of the celebration and prepare to welcome Jesus into our world. We pray for the plans for our own Christmas Day dinner for those who would otherwise find themselves on their own. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of faithfulness and peace, be with us as we try to grow closer to you and to each other. Amen. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. And now we give you thanks because in Jesus you have received us as your sons and daughters, joined us in one fellowship with the saints and made us citizens of your kingdom. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Almighty God, on the night before Jesus died, Jesus shared a meal with the gathered friends. Jesus took bread and thanked you. Jesus broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. Jesus thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ has ascended upon high. Almighty God, as we bring this bread and wine and remember Jesus' death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for Jesus' coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Almighty God, along with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
So let us pray. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to the fullness of life for which we long, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We sing our final hymn.
Good to be jo joined with you today and I look forward to joining you next Sunday. Uh, keep up to date by liking the St. Joseph's page on Facebook or making sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, if you are local, later today, if you're watching this on Sunday, is the next Celtic service at Rescola. Uh, this will be about a time to remember and there will be an opportunity to remember loved ones in that time. Uh, later on, if, you, if you're watching this uh, Sunday morning, uh, later on, tune in to Radio Cornwall at about ten past twelve and you'll hear me uh, talking about the Christmas Day dinner. Uh, that's, uh, what, now five weeks away. Um, if you are local or know anyone that will be on their own, uh, please get them to book in. Um, there's still some space. If you know anyone that would like to have a meal delivered, um, I can probably, possibly, if there, certain areas can arrange that. Christ, O exalted King, pour upon you the abundance gifts and bring you to the reigning glory and the blessing of God Almighty, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Be among you and remain with you and those whom you love, seen and unseen, now and for ever. Amen. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom and you are exalted as head over all. Amen.